Lady and the Tramp, Chapter 4 The rest of the morning was more of the same. Stopping by the park, Tramp eyed a gentleman sitting on one of the many benches that lined the paths. A sandwich was placed on a piece of parchment paper beside him. Tramp's mouth watered. The sausages had been tasty, but Tramp was always up for a bite. While the owner was distracted, Tramp nabbed the sandwich. Trotting away, he had only made it to the other corner of the park before he lost his snack. Two stray puppies, eyes wide and ribs showing, stared up at him, or rather, at his sandwich. Come on, Tramp said. Don't give me that look. But it was no use. He didn't have the heart to say no, even if he had invented that look. Tossing the pups his sandwich, Tramp continued on his way. This was a wandering day. It was beautiful, sunny, not too hot, not too cold. He made his way along the river street, then turned down another alley behind Restaurant Row. This was his favorite spot in the city. The alley was a treasure trove of leftover food. Tramp could sample French cuisine or have some good old fashioned American fare. But this, but his favorite was Tony's restaurant. There was always something tasty waiting for him behind the Italian restaurant. Approaching the back door of the restaurant, Tramp spotted Joe. The young man had been working in the restaurant for as long as Tramp could remember. Tramp barked and Joe looked up from, the, from scraping leftovers and smiled. He grabbed a large meaty bone and held it up. Here you go, butch, he said, tossing the bone to Tramp. Tramp grabbed the bone in one swift, easy move. Then, with a bark of thanks and a wag of his tail, he moved along. There was no doubt about it. Tramp ran this town. Not everyone agreed that Tramp was the king of the town. In fact, the local dog catcher, Elliot, thought Tramp was nothing but trouble. Spotting the dog catcher standing in front of a store window, Tramp ducked into the shadows. Elliot's brow was furrowed as he, ta as he taped a piece of paper to the glass. Stepping back, he admired his handiwork. On the piece of paper were several pictures of dogs and a number to call if a stray was spotted. Tramp made out the word dangerous. He laughed. That was a bit ridiculous. The most dangerous thing he knew was Elliot, not the dogs he pulled off the street. Careful to stay out of sight. Tramp made his way across the street to Elliot's parked paddy wagon. The big vehicle looked innocent enough until you got close and saw the bars on the back and heard the whimpers of captured animals coming from inside. Hiya, handsome, someone said from inside the truck. Tiptoeing over, Tramp saw his pals, Peg and Bull. And the rough and tumble bulldog were staring at him through the bars. Come on, Tramp said, moving closer. What happened? The pair had been on the street as long as he had. They knew better than to get caught. Bull shrugged with his thick shoulders. I had the idea to summer at the pound. Get off the streets for a bit. Rest the rump, he said. He stopped. What does it look like? We got caught. Beside him, Peg began to groom herself trying to get her usually tame coat back into some order. The fur was going every which way. Peg prided herself on always looking good. She was probably more upset about her coat being stuck in the truck. Some nerve of that guy, Peg said, confirming Tramp's thoughts about Elliot. You think this hairstyles itself? Tramp shook his head. You guys make it too easy on him when you hang together, he whispered. Peg and Bull, well, an unlikely, unlikely pair were helplessly attached to each other. That was not tramp style. We can't all play lone wolf, Peg replied, as if reading tramp's thoughts. I'm sorry. Was that a compliment? Tramp teased, flashing Peg a charming smile. Peg wasn't biting. She knew tramp's act, and she didn't have time for it that day. She needed him to get them out. Lucky for her, Tramp was feeling up to a challenge. He paced back and forth in front of the truck, trying to think of a plan. He needed something that would get Elliot's attention, 
but leave him with a way out. Hmm. The last thing he wanted was to free Peg and Bull and end up captured himself. Finally, he settled on a plan that was an oldie, but a goodie. He dropped to the ground and lay down. Then he began to whimper. By the store window, Elliot's head snapped to attention. Elliot moved across the street, walked down the truck, walked around the truck and spotted Tramp. Come on, at least give me a challenge. He got closer and knelt down. When Tramp didn't make a move to get away, Elliot smiled. He slipped his arms under Tramp and lifted him. Instantly, Tramp went limp, causing Elliot's legs to buckle. The man groaned as he struggled under Tramp's weight. Tramp made himself even limper. Elliot awkwardly moved closer to the back door of the truck. He unlocked the door just as Tramp leaped from his arms and darted across the street. Elliot shouted in surprise. He looked from his now empty arms to the dog, who no longer seemed hurt at all. His eyes narrowed. The dog had tricked him. Pleased with his successful distraction, Tramp wagged his tail, then turned and looked off down the street. Behind him, he heard Elliot muttering to himself as he grabbed his net and followed Tramp. The chase was on. Just like in the train yard, Tramp had the advantage. He knew the streets better than Elliot, better than anyone. Spotting a passing trolley car, Tramp leaped into it and dodged and weaved his way among the passenger's legs. Elliot followed but the man's bulky frame made it hard for him to move quickly. Men and women let out angry cries as they were pushed out of the way. Clear a path, Elliot said. Animal control officer coming through. No one moved, except Tramp. Making his way to the other end of the trolley, Tramp looked over his shoulder. Elliot's eyes landed on him. They narrowed. Tramp barked once and then jumped off the trolley car onto the back of a passing delivery truck. As the truck continued on, the driver was unaware of the new passenger. Tramp glanced back at the trolley car. Elliot stood in the doorway, his hand raised in the air, his face a mask of anger. Tramp smiled. Now, he just had to hope that the distraction had given Peg and Bull time to get away. He lay down and closed his eyes as the truck headed into a nice part of town. He would take a quick nap. It had been a busy morning. That's the end of that chapter.